inside number 23 my channel which is all about knitting and sewing and generally living the craftiest life possible my name if you don't know is Katie and thank you so much for coming to spend a little bit of time with me this week you can find me pretty much everywhere on social media as Miss Lavelli um, although I'm most active on Instagram so please do come over and say hi and look at all of my pictures of my dog which seems to be what I post the most about but yes I'm coming to you from Hertfordshire which is just north of London in the UK. Um, a slightly grey UK today but um, the lighting's pretty good for podcasting so that's great. We also have a Ravelry group for the podcast which you can find by searching inside number 23 on the groups tab in Ravelry but if you want to get in touch with me regarding anything to do with the podcast or um, prize donations or anything like that the best way to get hold of me is my brand new shiny email address um, which is katie at inside number 23.com. Um, if you do kind of message me on other platforms I can't guarantee that you'll get a prompt response or any response at all as all of my responses at the moment are pretty much going through my email systematically so so yes please use my email address if possible I feel a little bit out of sync today because this is a very different podcasting day for me I usually film on a Sunday and upload on a Monday today is Tuesday so we're already a couple of days out of sync um, and it feels like a lot of time has gone by since I last spoke with you guys so forgive me if things feel a little bit irregular um, hopefully it won't take me too long long to get back into the rhythm of things. I do have a huge amount to talk about this week so I'm going to kind of jump straight into the administrative stuff but as always thank you thank you thank you for spending a bit of time with me this week. Um, I appreciate that your time is precious and it's lovely that you'd want to spend a little bit of that time with me but let's crack straight on shall we? A couple of things that are going on in addition to the podcast over the next month are um, I'm taking part in Me Made May which is a kind of challenge yourself to wear as many Me Made garments in the month of May as possible. I am challenging myself to wear something Me Made every single day and I'm sharing my progress um, on Instagram. I'm uploading photos every day on Instagram of my various outfits um, and I know that a lot of you who are into the sewing content of my podcast which is been a little bit sparse recently um, are appreciating that so like I said follow me on Instagram if you want to kind of get involved in my me made May journey. In addition to that I am also daily vlogging throughout the month of May. I'm super busy this month or so it seems. Um, you can find all of those videos on this channel. I have a playlist for it. It's called It's Gonna Be May because that's a super clever and original <laughs> title. Um, but it's been really, really fun to kind of share my day-to-day -day adventures with you guys. Um, so yeah, I will link down below the playlist for all of those videos. In terms of knit-alongs and all of that good stuff, I am hosting the Harry Potter knit-along this year. It's lasting throughout the year 2017 and I'm drawing prizes at the end of each month. And I have the really lovely job of drawing a prize winner this week for April for the Harry Potter cow. Um, I closed the thread this morning. You guys were super lucky. I left that thread open <laughs> for a really long time. Um, but I drew a winner at random. And the post was um, post 179, um, which was Lucy J. Will. Lucy, so congratulations, Lucy. You made the most beautiful pair of socks using some Nora George yarn. And as you all know, I'm a huge fan of Tracy and everything that she does with Nora George. So um, please get in touch with me, Lucy. I'd really appreciate it if you would drop me an email with your contact information and I will get your prize sent out to you ASAP. Thank you so, 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 so much to everybody who is continuing to get involved and show love for the Harry Potter cow. I have already opened a thread for May finished objects. I'm trying my best to stay on top of it. I know that the April FO thread um, actually got opened by one of you guys because I just it just slipped my mind but I'm trying to be more organized <laughs> and so thank you for your patience on that. In particular, thank you to everybody who has won a prize recently who is still waiting on prizes. I appreciate you've been waiting for a while. I am doing my best to get on top of things prize-wise um, and fingers crossed those should all be in the post to you 
as soon as I possibly can, um, but they will be getting to you. You will get them eventually. Um, know that it's just, yeah, things have been a little bit hectic over the past um, several um, weeks and months. It always is hectic, isn't it? But, but yes, they will be getting to you. You deserve them. I know that you're going to love them and um, they will be coming from me with so much love to you. So again, thank you so much for your patience. I appreciate it. Like you couldn't even know. <laughs> And without further ado, I think it's time that we move on to the main segments of the podcast, because like I said, I have a lot to share with you this week. Um, in case that there are any sections that you want to skip over, I do always time stamp every single individual segment of my podcast in my show notes. So that will give you um, the time to kind of skip to if you want to avoid any particular segments. I know that some people don't want to see things like um, acquisitions or would prefer just to move on to the knitting goodness. But without further ado, like I said, let's get started. As always, I'm starting off with what am I wearing this week? And it is Me Made May, so I'm wearing a Me Made dress. And guys, you're going to know what this pattern is. You guys are sick of me talking about this pattern, I know. But it is one of my versions of the Robe Blue dress by Deer and Doe. And I know it's incredibly frustrating for a lot of you who love this pattern as much as I do, because it's currently out of stock pretty much everywhere. Um, Deer and Doe are, in, are an incredible pattern designing team, and they are currently revamping a lot of their original patterns. This dress was one of their first patterns that they produced. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's great. I love this pattern. If they're revamping it, if they're going to add more um, kind of detail and everything into it, I think that's going to be fantastic. So the second that I know that it is available to buy again, I will let you know. But for now, if you can snag one online, they are a bit few and far between. But as you'll know, if you're a regular viewer, I love this dress pattern. This version of this dress is one that I made for Edinburgh Yarn Festival. It's my kitty cat version. I embroidered these little cats onto the collar and the rest of the fabric is just this gorgeous kind of black and white cat print. I bought this fabric from John Lewis in the January sale so it was pretty much a steal. It was so reasonably priced and um, I love it. It's it's kind of nice and simple but it's still a bit kooky which is kind of how I like my clothes. I like them to have a little bit of character. I'm not the type of person who's bland when it comes to the way that they dress but I love it. It's a really, really lovely thing to just throw on and automatically feel fancy, but also feel really comfortable and yeah, best pattern ever. In terms of the order of things this week, I'm mixing things up a little bit because I have quite a lot of things to share with you. So rather than going straight into knitting and sewing content, my next segment is going to be owl poles, little owls, because the owls have been incredibly generous to me over the last couple of weeks. You may remember in last week's episode, I mentioned that I um, had had some lovely deliveries, but I didn't have time to share them with you in last week's episode. I do have time this week though, so um, hold on to your hats because I have some really, really lovely things to share with you. An incredibly wonderful and kind and generous lady who is Stacy of the Stress Knits podcast and Stress Knits, the um, yarn dyeing company, um, got in touch with me and asked if she could send me a parcel. And Stacy is wonderful. I've been a fan of her podcast for a very long time. We actually um, met for the first time in person in New York when I was at Vogue Knitting Live. It was such a joy to meet her. It really, really was. She is just as lovely and friendly and warm in real life as she comes across on her podcast. So it was genuinely a delight to meet her and even more so to hear from her again after Vogue Knitting Live. And I wasn't quite prepared for just how special this parcel was going to be because you guys, she sent a colorway that she has designed specifically for me for inside number 23. The colour is simply called 23. <laughs> and this is the yarn. Oh, so here is Stacey's label, Stress Knits. And this is the skein of yarn. I mean, she got me down to a T, didn't she? It's pretty much every colour that I love. So there's oranges, burgundies, forest green in there. It's it's gorgeous. I I I'm pretty much speechless, let's be honest. Um words are not coming very easily. 
it's so thoughtful to have this in my in my yarn collection now and I love it. Um, she sent me a skein. She was also generous enough to send a skein for you guys as well. So this will be going into my kind of prize um, basket along with some other lovely things that I have waiting for giveaways and that type of thing. But the, um, the version that I'm keeping is the Sparkle Sock version. It is a Superwash Merino Nylon and Gold Stellina blend. Um, you guys know I love a bit of sparkle. The one that you guys will be getting is Favourite Sock, which is just a 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon blend, um, 400 yards to um, the 100 gram skein, and it is glorious. It is so beautiful. She also sent along... Um, this little extra skein is also Stellina based and I think that this was actually from a yarn club that she did not so long ago. It's adorable, it's all of these kind of pinky colours with blue and, and lilac and it's beautiful. Yay! So yes, thank you so much Stacey. If you haven't checked out her podcast, you really really should. I'll obviously put all of her details down below in, in the show notes. And yeah, just go and show her some love and check out her yarn as well because she is one talented lady and yeah, there's so much love in these skeins of yarn and just thank you so much, Stacey. It means the world. Another lovely parcel that arrived in the last couple of weeks was um, a very, very generous gift from a viewer and that is Lynn. So hi, Lynn. Hi. Lynn got in touch and asked if she could send me something that she has made herself and that sounded wonderful and when this parcel arrived oh, I always say this but I just don't expect such beautiful things to be sent to me sometimes it really does take my breath away because basically Lynn sent me a beautiful project bag I'm going to show you this side of the project bag first so lovely owl print this gorgeous kind of um kind of thicker, almost canvas on the bottom of it, which I love. But as you can see, this is this is folded in half. It has a really nice strap on one side of it as well, which I really like. When you unfold it, you can see what kind of took my breath away. Can you see this? That, my friends, is Harry Potter and it's cross-stitched. I mean, I I do cross stitch. I don't do it as much now as I used to, and I do want to do it more, but this would have taken, I mean, it would have taken me ages to do that. And the amount of time and love that has been put into this little guy, it's adorable. And it's a lovely size project bag. Look at this. It's a properly nice kind of sweater size bag. It's immaculately sewn, genuinely, it is, it's just stunning and he is gorgeous. I love it so much. Lynn, I can't thank you enough for this. Genuinely, it is stunning. In addition to that, she also sent a smaller little kind of notions pouch. <laughs> can't speak, notions pouch for you guys in the same fabrics. So the same kind of lovely linen with the little owls and some additional little Harry Potter treats. Um, so in there, I believe we have a necklace and a couple of little, or a little kind of collectible card with the Hogwarts founders on it, which is so, so lovely. These are gonna be prizes for the Harry Potter cow. And Lynn, I, I can't thank you enough for the fact that you put so much time and love and effort into this for me. It is beautiful and I just feel spoilt rotten, so thank you. And um, look for these in the Harry Potter cow soon, you guys, as, as lovely prizes. I have one more parcel of loveliness to share with you this week in terms of what the owls brought me. And this parcel really is kind of near and dear to my heart um, in terms of the lovely lady it came from. Um, you may know lovely Hannah Lisa um, because of her incredible undertaking of um, making the the knitting 
kind of, I believe, I suppose you'd call it a magazine. Would you call it a magazine, Hannah Lisa? I don't know. So it's a knitting pattern collection and it's going to be incredible. If you haven't pre-ordered the first edition, which is Woods, you really, really, really should. You may or may not remember that um, I talked about this a while ago on the podcast because it started as a kind of crowdfunding campaign to get this um funded. However, Hannah Lisa got in touch with me again and said, alongside that incredible endeavour, she's also um, been making project bags for a little while and really, really wants to focus on turning that into um, a really special business. And I think that's I think it's incredible. Um, and she asked if she could send a couple of her bags because she's basically perfected the look of the bag now that she wants. And you guys are gonna lose your minds when I show you these bags. She sent me two and for one thing the packaging was incredible. Everything is so well thought out. So this is her logo just here. Beautifully minimal and clean and modern. Um, all of the packaging was kind of monochrome so a lot of grey with um, the print of her label on things, um, brown paper, but like I said she sent two project bags and here they are. Okay, I am the type of person who loves over the top and multicoloured and bright and vibrant but the elegant beauty of having something so clean and well thought out. The more you look at these bags, the more I love them. Um, again, we have her tag just attached at the top. First thing I lost my mind over was the zip. Rose gold zip in this project bag, you guys. Rose gold. This is not a drill. Rose gold zip with this really nice kind of leather tassel on the end, which I love. The actual fabrics of the bag are kind of this twill fabric, it's a lovely kind of natural colour and then she does different colours on the base in this beautiful felt. So the two kind of colours that I picked um, to get sent to me was this beautiful coral which I'm obsessed with, this is the one that I am keeping and this beautiful like mustardy colour and this is the one that will be going for one of you guys so <laughs> um, watch this space for that one as well. But when you actually look at the inside of the bag it's even it's even better inside you have a little pocket which again has the label on it but you also have this little clip which I love because what you can do with this is you can put um, progress keepers on there you could put um, you could slip your small scissors um, on there what I think I'm going to do is get a kind of keychain and put a load of um, progress keepers on there and clip that inside because that's just going to be so useful but you could use it for all kinds of different things and I just think this looks so classy and beautiful and this size is perfect for socks or any kind of one um, skein project and I'm obsessed with it. I think it's stunning and it's very very clear to me that Hannah has spelt, spent a long time developing this style of bag exactly how she wants it to be and I think it's, I think it's incredible. So do check out her website. But again, this one I'm gonna be hanging on to just for a little bit longer. It will be being part of a giveaway. I'm not entirely sure what that giveaway is going to be um, just yet, but watch this space. It is going to be um, included um, pretty soon, I would hope. But for now, I am definitely going to be using this a lot. So you are gonna be seeing a lot of it on the podcast. If you want one for yourself right now, if you don't wanna wait until we have a giveaway going on, then, um, do head over to her website and get one of your own because they're beautiful. And I love this one. This is just so special. Thank you so much, Hannah Lisa. I really, 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 really appreciate you sending me your beautiful bags. I wish you every success in your um, bag making endeavor. And yeah, just sending you loads of love. Enough about what the owls brought me. Anyway, I think it's time that we get into the real nitty gritty of the creative parts of the podcast, don't you? So next up, it is What's On My Needles. And 
I'm not gonna lie, I haven't got a lot to share with you this week. Um, my focus has very much been on sewing and editing daily vlogs, and that means that not a huge amount of work has actually been done on any knitting projects. But I have got one finished object to share with you this week, which is incredibly exciting. Um, I'm so happy with it and it knit up so quickly and it was so satisfying and it looks amazing and I finished my angel hat. Um, this pattern is a free pattern by Kay Jones who is um, one half of the Bakery Bears, um, her and her husband Dan podcast together and I love this pattern. Look at the textured goodness of this. Oh my goodness. This yarn is dyed by my lovely friend Amy of Stranded Dye Works, who I actually saw this week, but more on that a little bit later. Um, and I love it so much. The keen-eyed amongst you are going to notice that this hat is missing something that I shared with you both on Instagram and on some of my daily vlogs this week, and that is the pom-pom that I had on this. So there's a little bit of a story behind that pom-pom. Um, I bought a really nice giant pom-pom maker from John Lewis this last week, and I used the last bit of yarn that I had from, from this skein. This is Aran Weight yarn. It's the rugged base that Amy does, which I think is lovely and I want all the Aran yarn from her now, but I made um, a large pom-pom. It's the first ever pom-pom that I've made. I mean, not the first one, I made a lot as a child, but the first one in a considerable amount of time that I have made. And I sewed it onto the hat, left it for a couple of days, thought, okay, I'm not 100% happy with it, but we'll see. Went back to it a few days later, still wasn't really happy with it, tried kind of puffing it up a bit, doing a couple of bits, just wasn't happy. Genuinely not happy with how it looked. And I love the hat so much. I thought having a pom-pom on it that is just not working is gonna make me hate the hat. And that wasn't something that I was willing to do. So I may have replaced the pom-pom with something else. Ah! <laughs> I am so much happier with this now. This pom-pom is one that I bought from um, Loop during my trip to Loop this week with um, with Amy and with Nikki of the Tea and Possibilities podcast. And I am so happy with it. It is big and fluffy and gorgeous. And I love the kind of contrast of this natural fur um, against the, the neon of the limoncello. Uh, yarn because that's the colorway. Did I tell you the colorway was called limoncello? Yeah, limoncello, it's this incredible neon yellow and now it has this amazing pom-pom on the top. So fluffy and amazing and it just finishes it off beautifully as far as I'm concerned. I'm not gonna put it on right now because if I put it on, I'm gonna have hat hair for the rest of the podcast. So I'm sorry about that, but when it gets colder, you can guarantee I'm gonna be wearing this all the time. So there will be more pictures of me wearing it at a later date, but I love this pattern. It is a free pattern, which I think is incredible. It knit up really, really quickly. It was just really fun. I mean, so much fun that I've already got yarn for another one because Emrys wants one now and he can't rock the neon yellow like I do. <laughs> so basically I just picked up some more Aran weight yarn um, when I was at John Lewis. You can tell I've been to John Lewis a lot recently. I've mentioned John Lewis like three times already, but this is um, Eric Knight yarn. It's 100% British wool, Aran weight, and it's just this kind of navy, kind of gray blue color. Um, it's called Night Sky, apparently. So Emrys will be getting his own version of the angel hat soon out of this yarn. And then we can be kind of hat twinsies. Although I don't think that he will want a pom-pom on his, which is a shame because you know what would look amazing on this? It's like a chocolate brown pom-pom. Oh, that would be amazing. But yes, really, really happy with my angel hat. You can find it on my Ravelry page as the neon angel hat, kind of a play on words of um, the film Neon Demon, Neon Angel. I don't know which way my brain works when I name my projects, but that's where I was going. But yes, love it so much. And it was a really, really fun thing to knit.
I've only really been working on one other project this week in terms of my knitting. I have still got socks on the needles. They're still not finished. I've only put a little bit of work onto them, so I'm not gonna be sharing those with you this week. But the one thing that has been taking up my mind, um, my time, has been living in my beautiful Addicted to Sock Knitting Doctor Who bag. And it is, of course, my Hufflepuff Pride cardigan. This is becoming a bit of a knitting black hole um, because <laughs> it's grown considerably since I last shared it with you. It really has because it's now this big, okay? It's getting huge. But the problem is, is that this pattern, which is the Trolley Dodger pattern, involves a huge amount of stockinette stitch from when you have put the little pockets in up to when you separate for the sleeves. Um, basically, I need to knit something like 17 inches of stocking net. Well, from the cast on edge up to where I finish needs to be around about 17 inches, I think. And it takes a long time because this thing is not small. This is how many stitches I have currently on this very, very long needle. So yeah, it's taking a while, it's taking its sweet time. It's getting a little bit tedious <laughs> um, because obviously the knit rows are quite quick but then I have to do purl rows as well and I know that there are ways that I could kind of change it so I'm not purling but I want to improve my purl stitch and the speed of which I purl so I'm, I'm persevering through doing that but um, it feels like it's going on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and the only thing that's keeping me going is the fact that I love this colour so much. I know that I'm going to wear this when it's done, I know that I'm going to love it but my goodness getting there is taking a ton of time and it's not the most enjoyable of projects to knit on right now because of that. Um, I really don't want to start knitting on another sweater project because I want to be more monogamous and get things finished. In particular, since I've started doing Me Made May, I've realised that having garments to wear on a day-to-day -day basis that I've made myself makes me so happy that rather than spreading my time across huge amounts of projects and then having nothing finished and nothing new for the longest time, I want to try and be more monogamous um, and work on maybe one or two projects at a time just to get things finished but considering that my time has been limited over the last couple of weeks, what with, you know, it's going to be May videoing and um, the sewing that I've been doing as well, this has taken a back seat, which is sad, but I want it finished. I want it finished. One thing I do want to show you, um, Amy actually gave me a little progress keeper. Can you see him? He's a badger, oh, I love this. Um, she bought this, I believe, at Alternate Universe where she was doing a trunk show over the last couple of weeks. Um, and I love it so much. I'll put the details if I can find them down below so that you can get one for yourself. But considering that this is my Hufflepuff pride cardigan, it seemed incredibly appropriate to have a, um, a little badger progress keeper on here. So I love that. And I do love knitting this in terms of the yarn. The yarn is actually Knit Picks yarn. It's Knit Picks Capra. Um, the mustard colour is turmeric and then black is the detailing. I just really need to devote a huge amount of time to it and just get it done and stop moaning about it. But it's hard. It's hard and there's always the temptation to cast on new things as well, which is my problem because I do have startitis at the moment. I just want to cast on all of the new things rather than work on the old things, but I'm trying to be good. And that's everything that I've been knitting on this week. I told you it was slightly more limited, um, but to be honest, it's because a lot of my time has been spent on sewing projects. Yes, my next segment, you guys, is gonna be so what? Because sewing, the mojo has returned. I am so happy. I love making clothes. I'm really, really excited about Me Made May. I talked in last week's podcast about um, the challenges I wanted to set for myself for Me Made May. And one of them was to sew up at least four different items of clothing over May to kind of challenge myself to do more sewing because I love sewing, but let's be honest, it's been really on the back burner recently. So 
this week I um, I started sewing again. But without further ado, let me show you what I was working on. I think that a lot of you are going to <laughs> realise that I really am a creature of habit in terms of the things that I like. It's the reason that I've sewn up three versions of this dress so far and a blouse version and I'd like to sew more versions of this dress um, and also my other kind of main number one when it comes to pattern design is Tilly and the Buttons. I talk about her patterns all the time and how much I love them and how I think that they are incredible if you want to start sewing but I whipped out this pattern this week. It's the Cleo dress which I've actually had in my stash for a little while. It is a pinafore style dress if you can see it comes in two different versions so this is kind of the longer one and this is the mini dress version and there are a couple of different variations that you can do with the pattern in terms of whether you have buckles whether you have buttons um uh, pocket placement and that type of thing but i literally just made the mini version as pictured here and you can see a little bit more of the process of me sewing this up this week in my Me Made May videos. I mean, my it's gonna be May. It's all about May. My May vlogs, I did kind of talk a little bit about this, saw a little bit of the construction of it, but it's finished. I've already worn it out. I wore it out at the weekend when I went to meet um, Amy and Nikki in London and I love it. So without further ado, let me grab it so I can show it to you. One thing to bear in mind is it does have dog hair on it already. It's one of the um, unfortunate things about living with a pug, as adorable as he is, he sheds everywhere. But this is my Cleo dress. Oh, isn't it adorable? So I actually bought from Tilly's website, she has these um, buckles, these um, dungaree clips available to buy on her website and when I purchased the pattern I made sure to put some of these in my basket as well just because I think that they're a really nice touch, I think they give it a really kind of professional finish and um, yeah this is the dress, I used this navy twill fabric that's the length of it that I'd had in my stash, it's a cotton twill and I've had it for years. I did make a skirt out of this once, but the skirt was incredibly unflattering and I don't have it anymore, but I had a large amount of yardage of this left and it just felt like it would be perfect for a um, kind of dungaree dress, just because it's almost like denim, but it's a little bit softer and a little bit lighter. So for kind of spring, summer, I think it's gonna be something that I'm gonna wear all the time. I did a lot of top stitching detail on it and I used this contrast thread so again it's a kind of golden brown which went with the whole um, dungaree um, denim style i really like the back detailing as well with the top stitching i just think it looks really professional and i really love it it was super easy to sew up this is um technically a beginner's pattern and yeah i did as you can see add some patches onto it. This was a great amount of discussion for me in order to decide whether or not I was going to put the patches on here and how I was going to put them on. These patches are from Punky Pins and they are Stranger Things themed. So this one says mornings are for coffee and contemplation. This one says she's our friend and she's crazy. And I also had another one which I popped on the back, which is the friends don't lie pin um, patch rather. <laughs> And I just love how it looks. I think it's so pretty. I think it's a lovely detail to add to the back of the dress. And yeah, I am obsessed with this. I was a little bit nervous <laughs> that it would kind of look unflattering on me, but I wore it on Sunday with my uh, blouse that I made uh, out of this pattern, out of the Robe Bleuet pattern, which is the Rifle Paper Company fabric with all the little ponies and birds on it and I just felt amazing. I felt so comfortable. I felt like myself. I think that's why I love sewing clothes so much is that every time I put something on that I've made specifically to my kind of wants and needs and my personal style, I feel so much more myself than in something that I've just bought from a shop. I could see myself making a whole bunch of these. Um, because this is the type of thing that I would love to just throw on um, at the weekend, just to be casual. I love it, if you can't tell. And I think, again, 
I know I talk about how amazing Tilly and the Buttons patterns are, but every single step of this making process was made so easy by the fact that her directions are just second to none. Everything is clear and concise, there are pictures. I just love her pattern so much. I think she's incredible. And now I have another one of her lovely garments in my wardrobe, which makes me happy as a clam. So that's everything that I've actually made this week or worked on this week. But like I said, I visited a London this week with my lovely, lovely friends, Amy of Stranded Dye Works and the Stranded Podcast and Nikki of the Tea and Possibilities Podcast. But my next segment basically stems from that time in London because it is stash enhancements. Because we did do some cheeky little purchases. <laughs> while we do some cheeky purchases, we made some cheeky purchases whilst in London. And we went to some of my favorite shops in London and just had a really, really marvelous time. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let me show you kind of some of the bits and pieces that I picked up. So I've already shown you my lovely pom-pom which I purchased from Loop in London. That was our first port of call um, on our little London excursion. We went to Loop because you really can't go to London without going to Loop, as far as I'm concerned. I very, very rarely leave that shop without having purchased something, even if it's just a little notion or something like that. One thing that I did say to myself on this trip was that I was not allowed to buy yarn. It nearly happened, I'm not gonna lie, I did nearly purchase yarn whilst there because, like I said, it's incredibly tempting and the yarn fumes always go to my head every single time that I am there. Um, but I didn't pick up yarn. What I did pick up was a pattern book, which I had seen on Instagram and been kind of obsessed with. So it had to come home with me. And that is The Artisan. And this is by um, Helga Isager. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Isager? Isager? I'm, I'm just, I'm just the worst at names. I'm sorry, but this is a gorgeous selection of patterns that I was losing my mind over because pretty much every single pattern in this book I want to knit. The first is called Pearl Sweater. Oh. Next up we have the Twine Sweater. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with this. Oak Jacket. Ebony cardigan and the birch jacket. Oh, I am obsessed, I love it. Every single thing in here I could see myself making, genuinely, I am so happy to have this. But the fun thing is, is that um, in me kind of gravitating towards this, I also kind of persuaded both Amy and Nikki to pick this up as well. So maybe we'll do a knit along or something, I don't know, but. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. <laughs> the other shop that we paid a visit to in London was Ray Stitch. And I have not visited Ray Stitch since they opened up their new store. It's within walking distance of Loop. Um, so if you are going to take a visit to Loop in London, I would really, really, really recommend that you also um, go and see Ray Stitch as well, particularly now that they've moved premises. They used to be in quite a small enclosed space. They've now moved kind of across the road from their older premises and they are in a beautiful, wide, gorgeous, lovely store. Two floors of fabric, patterns, notions, everything that the kind of the sewist in you would love. And also if you just like buttons and ribbons and trims or you want to get fat quarters for project bags, this is the type of shop that is just perfect. I could have taken out another mortgage on my house and spent it in that shop. Genuinely, I was so excited and I had to be incredibly restrained. I think I was planning on buying two different types of fabric and I had a pile of dress patterns that I wanted to take home and I managed to kind of whittle it down because I am on a budget um, and I can't just afford to buy everything much as I would like to but I did treat myself to some lovely things, mostly for um, Me Made May, to be honest. But um, I came away with three different dress patterns um, or sewing patterns and I'm really happy with them. Um, 
So yeah, let me show you what I bought. First and foremost, surprise, surprise, I picked up a Tilly and the Buttons pattern. This is one that I have wanted to get for a little while, but I'd kind of just been, for whatever reason, avoiding it. Not avoiding it, I just hadn't bought it. <laughs> this is the Zadie dress, um, and it is a jersey fabric dress, which is just gorgeous. I love the construction of this. It's made in all of these different panels, which is super flattering. So you can see you can really mix up print and colour and everything in one of these. It's fabulous. But the other thing that just drives me crazy about this is that it has pockets, you guys. So if you can see kind of this shape here, these diagonal lines coming down on the skirt, just like here and here, you have pockets in there. Pockets in a dress. Everybody wants pockets in a dress. Let's be honest, that's all we want. And being the biggest fan in the world of Tilly and the Buttons anyway, and in particular her um, knit fabric dresses and clothes. I've made the Agnes top and the Coco dress and I want to make a hundred of both of those patterns. It just makes me super happy to have another of her jersey fabric dresses in my collection so that I can start um, having some even more comfy outfits to wear. Oh, I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I can't wait to make one. The other two patterns that I bought are both by the same pattern producer, and that is closet case patterns. And I haven't ever actually sewn from a closet case pattern before. I don't know why. I've always admired their patterns online, and I've kind of added them to my mental queue of things that I wanted to make, but I've never bought one of them. Um, I think that it's because originally when they started out, they were all PDF patterns. Although I enjoy a good PDF pattern as much as the next person, I um, I don't really have time to print out all of those pages and stick them together and cut them out before I even make a dress. Um, so I didn't realise that they actually had paper patterns now, which is super exciting. Um, so I picked up two patterns and these are both quite different for me, but I'm excited about both of them because they're both filling a big gap that I have in my current wardrobe. So the first pattern that I picked up is called Carolyn. And if you can see, it's pajamas. <laughs> this is when you know that your kind of handmade wardrobe has got to the point where you really, really do have enough clothes in your wardrobe to be able to pretty much just live in me made things for your entire time, because I am now thinking about additional things to my wardrobe. Um, so I'm getting into pajamas. And the reason I picked up this pattern is for one, I have seen some incredible versions of these pajamas sewn up. Um, they are exactly the type of pajamas that I love. They are kind of um, button up. You can do them shorts or trousers and they have piping detail, little kind of pocket detailing. I love them. I think they are incredible. But also I have a lot of novelty print cotton fabrics that I have gathered up through the years um, that I have kind of been saving for pyjama projects. I spend a lot of time in pyjamas, <laughs> I really do. Um, it's something that I love to do is put on a nice pair of pyjamas at the end of the day and just get cosy. And so I thought, why not treat yourself and make some really, really nice pyjamas? What I would like to do in an ideal world is actually make the short set of pyjamas, so the short sleeve top and the shorts, and then also make a pair of the trousers in the same fabric. So that basically means that those pyjamas I can then wear kind of throughout the majority of the year, because I very wear, I very rarely wear long sleeve tops um, unless it's very, very cold when, when I'm sleeping. So in winter, the majority of the other times of year, I will just wear t-shirts to sleep in with pajama bottoms. So having the option to be able to have interchangeable bottoms, so um, the long trousers and the shorts, I think would mean that I'd be wearing these pajamas all the time. So yeah, I'm really excited about making these. I think these will probably be one of the things that I that I get sewn up um, during Me Made May. If I can, I would love to, but I'm really excited to make these. Um, I think it's gonna be so much fun to have fun pajamas that I've made. 
that's just kind of where I'm living right now, I think that would be awesome. But yes, love this pattern, can't wait to work on it. And I'm excited to use a different um, kind of indie sewing pattern designer, because like I said, never used closet case patterns before. The next and last purchase from Ray Stitch is another pattern from Closet Case. And this really, really, really is a challenge that I'm setting myself. For those of you who kind of know my style and follow me on Instagram and have watched my podcast for a while, one thing that you will notice, I very, very, very rarely insert ever <laughs> wear trousers. I pretty much live in dresses and skirts all the time. And it's kind of sad. I used to wear trousers a lot, but my weight changed quite a bit and um, everything that fitted me stopped fitting me and I can't really deal with the idea of going back into a shop and trying on loads of trousers that aren't gonna fit. Because my main problem is, is that even when I've put on weight and my waist is a little bit bigger, my hips are considerably bigger than my waist. I have lived my entire life, kind of post puberty, when your body changes, with at least 10 inches difference between the widest point in my hips and the narrowest point in my waist. I got a big bum. <laughs> so when you try on regular trousers in commercial shops, if they fit me on my hips, they don't fit me on the waist. If they fit me on the waist, there's no way in hell they are going to be going over my hips. It's just, just the way that things are when you have a big bum. And so I found that the only kind of trousers that did fit for a long time were kind of hipster trousers, very low slung that were just fit around my hips and didn't have to worry about my waist too much. And I am a high-waisted girl, 100%. I love things that sit high on my waist. It's just a style that I enjoy more and so I just couldn't ever find anything that I really liked. When I worked at Vivian of Holloway, which I did quite a long time ago, I used to be able to buy their clothes, their trousers in particular were a great fit for a kind of more vintage style figure, so if you have a small waist and large hips, um, if you go into vintage reproduction clothing, a lot of the time they're going to fit you really well, but I grew out of those because I put on weight, like I said, and I thought, there's no point in me spending money on things that I'm not gonna wear as much as I wear skirts, but I miss wearing trousers. Enter the ginger pattern. This is a pattern for a pair of jeans. I'm gonna make myself jeans. <laughs> I really, 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 really want to wear these. I, I can't wait high-waisted skinny jeans and it's going to be amazing. This is a challenge, I'm not going to lie. Um, fitting trousers is a challenge for anyone, really. Even more advanced kind of seamstresses, seamstresses, can't speak. Um, fitting something like this is never going to be easy. I'm well aware of that. Um, it's a challenge that I'm setting myself. I want to have a complete me-made wardrobe. And in order for me to do that and do it really successfully, jeans are gonna be a thing. It's gonna take a while. It's not gonna be happening straight away. Um, in particular, because I don't really have the right fabrics in my stash at the moment to make a pair of these. But I think if I can do this and do it right, this could be one of the best things that I've ever made, possibly. We'll see, we'll see, but I have been wanting this pattern for the longest time and I think it's about time that I really push myself with my sewing because making these dresses, as much as I love it and as much as I wear them all the time, it doesn't pose any kind of challenge to me because I've made them so many times now I could make them in my sleep. And I really, 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 really want a good fitted pair of jeans. And I think once I've climbed that mountain, I'll be like, I can sew anything for myself forever. <laughs> you know, watch this space. This could be very awkward because it could very easily go very, very wrong if I tried to make some of these, but now I have them. There's a challenge there, there's a challenge. And there you have it, you guys. That is all of the kind of the main content of the podcast this week. So we are moving on to the final segment, which is of course, general waffle. General waffle. For those of you who don't know, my general waffle segment is where I can waffle on about pretty much anything that 
takes my fancy that particular week so we do all kinds of things in this part of the podcast I like to have the flexibility but I just wanted to talk this week about something that's been playing on my mind quite a lot um, and I wanted to share it in case it was something that any of you guys also struggle with because it's something that affects me on a day-to-day -day basis but in particular when I'm feeling a little bit a little bit low, a little bit down in the dumps, which did happen this week. And that's feelings of inadequacy. Now, I do a podcast every week where I talk about all of the things I've been working on, all the things I've been making. I share my sewing, I share my knitting, I share all of these beautiful things. And one of the th questions that I get a lot is, how do you have the time how do you have the time to do all of this? And how do you, you know, how can you do it? I could never do that. And something that I've realised the more that I do this podcast is that is something that so many of us feel. And it's one of the main reasons that we don't try and achieve more, even if we really, really want to. People who see the things that I've sewn and say, I could never do that. My response is always, you just need to try you just need to start and you just need to do it but that being said one of my main issues in terms of not being able to get out of bed in the morning and actually be productive and do things with my life is this feeling of inadequacy it's a feeling that yeah I could do stuff but it's never going to be enough it's never going to feel like enough to me um I'm in a really lovely position at the moment that I can wear almost an entirely me-made wardrobe every day because of the amount of work that I've been putting into that for the last, you know, year or so. And yet I still feel that it's not enough. I write my show notes each week for this podcast and I think I haven't got enough to talk about. I didn't work hard enough this week. And yet the response I get is a lot of the time, I could never, you have, you, you've, you've worked so hard and you've done so much, but to me on a personal level, it still doesn't feel like I've done anything. And I feel like I let you guys down. I feel like I've let myself down. I feel like I'm almost pretending to be this highly prolific maker when really I'm just never producing as much as I think is acceptable. I know that this is a problem that a lot of podcasters feel. Um, it's the reason why not everybody podcasts every week. They feel that they don't have enough material to talk about. They feel like they haven't done enough work. They feel like they need to spend more time crafting in order to produce enough that is kind of adequate, that's acceptable, that's, um, that's aligned with the average of what everybody else is doing. And that is something that I do to myself almost every day. If I have a day where I do very little because I'm exhausted and I just want to spend time with my family or spend time with my friends I kind of punish myself for it mentally this week the reason that I'm podcasting on a Tuesday is because I had the most perfect day on Sunday with my friends wandering around London and going to shops and stroking yarn and looking at dress patterns but part of me was saying the whole time you should have been recording your podcast today you know you haven't done that it's not good enough it's not acceptable that you would go and do this other thing whilst you're supposed to be doing your podcast. And I don't want the podcast to turn into that kind of a thing for me because it's not an obligation. It's an absolute joy and a pleasure to podcast every week. And I'm so lucky that you guys want to spend that time with me and that you come back every week to see what I'm working on. And my kind of point to all of this is that even if you are watching someone every week and you think, I am not that person, I could never do that, I'm not as good as that, I don't do as much as that person, what we present on these kind of channels or anyone who's on social media or anything like that, they're showing you the best part of their life. They're showing you the shiny bright part of their life, as I always like to kind of call it, which is of course a big part of who they are. But even people that you consider to be successful are usually going to have these problems themselves. So the thing that I'm trying to tell myself every day, the thing that I would encourage you to do is just do it and screw the rest of it.
because sometimes you are your biggest naysayer. I know that I am. And I want to be a cheerleader for myself. So that's what I'm going to try and do this week. I'm going to try and stop telling myself that I'm inadequate, that I'm unworthy, that I'm not good enough. And I'm going to spend every morning looking in the mirror and saying, yep, you got this. Because I think we should just be a little bit kinder to ourselves. And just take a step back and look at your own achievements and celebrate them rather than constantly feeling that they're not enough. I don't know whether that's something that you guys feel the same way about, but I think if there's anyone out there who does feel like that, knowing that you're not alone can be, can be really helpful. And on that slightly <laughs> strange waffly note, I love how my general waffle just goes in completely different places every week. It's quite funny. But yes, on that note, I'm going to call it a day um, here, you guys. I am hungry. I want some lunch. I want to do some knitting. I want to do some sewing. i got so much to do today. Um, but thank you so much for coming back and watching this podcast again this week. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm sending you so much love. If you've enjoyed the video, please do give us a thumbs up um, and hit subscribe down below. But yeah, I hope you all have an incredible week. I will see you again at the regular time and the regular place next week, I promise. And um, for now, happy sewing, happy knitting, and I'll see you soon. Bye! Oh. <laughs> Let's try with that again.